Brendan asks, do you have a Grail car? But I want to ask about your PC to see like what 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 do you what do you what what are some of the wins you see in your PC? And what are some of the cars? Some cars I look at and I learned a lot with that car. Even trying to acquire it, research done on it, whatever it may be. What are some of those cars in your PC? Well, uh, well, again, uh, shouts out Brendan, man. Uh, appreciate the the question. Kobe was my guy, mm -hmm. and uh, on my Instagram, I have a post where it took me six months to buy a Topps Kobe rookie in 2018. And that was my favorite card. That was my favorite card. And uh, till this day, it's my favorite card. I actually am the proud owner of uh, of uh, the PSA 10s to the PSA 1s. I have over 60 copies of the Topps Kobe card. Now, granted, I was buying them for 50 bucks. Yeah, you know, uh, at Frank and Sons back in the day. Uh, shout out to all the homies, to all the vendors at Frank and Sons that I annoyed. <laughs> you know, and, uh, yeah. you know, I was like, hey, you guys have any Flair Jordans? <laughs> I mean, Flair George, you guys have any uh, Topps Kobe's? Yeah. You know, I was a fiend, bro. I, you should ask Flipstar Pat, man, the amount of times that we went to Frank and Sons just for that damn card. And, uh, and and uh, man, look, it, it paid off. Uh, man, unfortunately, Kobe passed. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I had no idea that these cards were going to, you know, I had, no one knew that, you know, uh, COVID happened and, and uh, the pandemic happened. Of course, the market skyrocketed once everybody got their checks. And uh, and the Kobe market uh, pretty much, you know, what is it, 10x? I'd say. Blew 10X. Up. And, yeah, blew and, up. Dude, FD. I remember buying star dates. Uh, I remember my favorite story is this: is I bought and, and Brendan to answer your question. I'm sorry, my my Grail card of all the beautiful cards I have in the vault. Uh, my favorite card is a PSA one, um, PSA one, Kobe tops paper 138 at one point i was the only one that had that card and for some of you that are are asking yourselves ej you could just scratch your card rip the card apart you know put the hole on the card and it'll become a psa one no you're wrong because what psa does is right when it's right when they could somewhat see an inclination that it is rightfully tampered or rightfully or or or, or uh, purposely tampered they'll just put an authentic case on it I got this card off of a off of a lot deal. I don't know. I might have gotten this from Mark or okay. somebody, but I bought a, a lot of cards. And inside the cards were the cards that were stuck together. So you had to purposely have to take them out, right? And of course, I'm I'm an idiot. I was one of those guys that was sending everything in back in the day. You know, in 2020, yeah. I was sending them in. And of course, I get a PSA two. I get a PSA three. I get an authentic. And lastly, I get a PSA one. And I remember that PSA one. I was like, "What the heck?" So I I scanned the uh, I scanned the barcode, and I'm like, and I see pop one, and I'm like freaking out. And uh, I can't say the two folks that have offered me insane money for this card, mm -hmm. but uh, till as it stands today, there's uh, I think there's three. I believe there's three in the world, and. I have not seen them in person. I take them to shows. I, I haven't taken them to shows recently. I'm sorry. But, um, you know, I take them to shows to show it off. And at the moment, it's not for sale. But I've been offered PSA 10 pricing for the PSA 1. And uh, that's my favorite card because it's one of those cards that, you know, you just can't get, man. Like, <laughs> so, you, uh, you know, most people have the exquisites. And I do have some very, very nice Kobe's in the in the vault. But uh, that's probably my favorite PC card is that Kobe uh, PSA one. Very cool, man. Yeah, that's a very cool story. Yeah. I remember I had, I had a friend that found that old. He was in the middle of Missouri. His name is Drew. I went to college with him. Shout out to you, Drew. Uh, he found that old uh, Jackie Robinson card for sale for like one hundred twenty-five dollars. This card is beat up. And I said, "Hey, man," he sends me a picture. I said, "Let me Venmo you right now. Please buy that card and send it to me." So he right. buys the card and sends it to me. I send it into a PSA. I get a PSA one on that on that Jackie Robinson card, but it's not about the PSA one on the card. It's about the story of him being in the middle of Missouri in no man's land and on uh, no woman's land, and then finding that card, texting me, and then sending me a card. I was just showing some people here at home the picture of it the other day. To me, though, the story you just told is a story that uh, is special, you know. That those are the those are the cars that a lot of people may think, and I knew when I asked this question, it wasn't going to be something with a big dollar amount to it. It was going to be something else because it becomes very uh, important with the stories and 
how you acquired something and how you went about getting it that is important to people. So I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, yeah. That kind no, of stuff makes me excited. But don't make no mistake, my PC is definitely a, a Roth IRA. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely that. Um, mm -hmm. but I think I'm more, more more proud of the fact that I was not. Uh, I, I invested pretty low on it, and, and investing wasn't even a term back then. It was not a term. There was, I think, sports card investor was just starting. He was like the only real, uh, true YouTuber when it came to investing, right? Mm -hmm. And even then, Jeff wasn't as like you know you could see he wasn't as camera heavy on the no he was not. I mean, when he like first that. Uh, when he walked in the first national he went to. No, he wasn't yeah, there. yeah. And uh, it, it's so funny because I, I didn't even, uh, man, shouts out to Average Shows, man. That's my local card show for, uh, my local card shop for life. Those are my guys, Jared, Dave, E, Travis. Travis is a well-known guy in the card show ranks too. Um, yeah, I really but, enjoy Travis, man. He's uh, always good to talk you know, to Of course, my, 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 uh, my hobby cousin, uh, Gretz, and, and everybody that, that's there at a, at a Average Joe's, man. Uh, uh, you know, I will say this, man. Those guys took care of me. And, uh, and I remember the Kobe showcases were there. And, and I would always buy Kobe's. I would never look at the comps. I would just never look at the comps, FD. I would just be like, because I knew, like, dude, this is a local card show. I mean, card, card shop that has rent. You know, this is a card shop that has overhead and i'm a businessman i'm an entrepreneur i understand that so i'm like who am i to look at a comp and i'm like well the last comp was 20 bucks well guess what the guy had to the guy who bought that card had to pay uh they had to pay uh, uh taxes on the card he had to pay uh, shipping on the card. He had to pay. Uh, he had to pay time on the card. He had to wait four or five days to get the card. Sometimes even weeks, depending on the eBay seller and depending on location. Average Joe's already has it. They curated the card for you. And then I think a lot of people don't understand too is that uh, there's condition bases with cards. You know, there's time frames on cards. There's location on a card. A Mike Trout card in LA may not necessarily move in the city of Ohio, but it'll move in LA because. He's my trout, right? Or, 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 you know, and there's different parlays to it. But I bought every Kobe card that that they had at the time, and uh, you know, gladly they were. I mean, luckily they were cheap, right? In, in today's standards, and the card that I remember buying was the. Uh, uh, I remember buying a Stardate. Uh, Kobe Stardate was a smooth card. That's a smooth nice card, card, and. and uh, and I remember buying that card. I don't remember how much I bought that card FD. And I, I stupidly sent it in for 13 bucks uh, uh, PSA. Cool little third, you know, cool little 30 days, you know, and even 30 days for me was like, what? Like 30 <laughs> days. Like, I, I don't know about no 30 days to, you know, have some random company, you know, uh, and, yeah, I bought your card up. Right. And yeah, man. And, and bro, I sent it in and it became a PSA nine. And I remember just leaving it in my collection. And of course, a year later, the market boomed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember the PSA 10 went for like $70,000. And I've got, I had offers for, I think the most I got offered. I don't know if he wants to publicize himself, but a good friend of mine who's a very well known guy in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, he offered me, and he's a good friend of mine, he offered me uh, 14000 cash for the card. Now, mind you, FD, I was probably in on that card for maybe a few hundred dollars. And, of course, yep. the, the $13. And, of course, I reluctantly passed. And, you know, and, and I remember uh, Card Poppy, uh, Mr. Uh, <laughs> my man, my man uh, Mr. Card Poppy himself was like, man, you should sell this card. And I was like, nah, man, like, I think that, you know, and I got greedy. I got greedy. And, yep. and man, that card's maybe, what, a $1,000 now? It went back then. Uh, and I remember uh, FDI. I sold. I'd say I sold about forty percent of my Kobe collection uh, during that boom. And and till this day, that that money has been reciprocated back into the card game. And and I'm very blessed to uh, to still be in it. Um, but I took my whole family out on vacation to uh, to Las Vegas. And in turn, now we're in, now in now we're in about Las Vegas. You know, so uh, so man, being able to reciprocate that kind of money uh, to Las Vegas, and then of course I, I think I sold my Topps Chrome uh, Kobe True Gem Plus. I bought that card in June for four thousand dollars. I bought it in June two thousand twenty, and I, I sold it for just a little under thirty two thousand dollars in, in February. And being able to 
to get those gains back in the day was insane. Of course, now it's, it's you can't do that anymore. But yeah. uh, you know, back in the day, man, I back in the day was last year. Um, like, man, it was it was crazy to look back at that time. And I think now at this time, you 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 have to step up your game a little bit and be more educational based. Yes, you get lucky here and there, um, but but definitely finding your niche is very key in this.